Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the studio. This week we have a short excerpt of a longer Patreon exclusive video. So if you want to watch the full video and many more like it, head over to my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash There's a link in the description below the video. Let's delve into the main topic of today's video, the shoulder girdle, shoulders and arms. To sculpt arms, we need to sculpt shoulders, and we can't really sculpt shoulders without a shoulder girdle. The shoulder girdle consists of the clavicles and the scapulas. They form when observed from above this diamond shape that has the shoulders hanging off the side and the neck placed right in the middle. Now once we commit to sculpting the shoulder girdle, we commit to the height of the pit of the neck and therefore our overall proportions in height, more or less. Changing the height of the torso, or the length of the torso, once the shoulder girdle is sculpted is a major pain in the butt and something we want to avoid needing to do. Think of the clavicles as bicycle handles. Observe from the side view and notice that they head back in space from the pit of the neck to the distal end above the shoulder. Also, usually they head a little upwards, but sometimes downwards. One thing to note is where this little bump at the end of the clavicles is placed in space. This little bump on top of the shoulder is the distal end of the clavicle. Sometimes it's closer to the pit of the neck, and sometimes it's closer to the C7 in the back. If the shoulders are hunched forward, the distal end will be closer to the front, and if the shoulders are pulled back in a superhero-esque pose, then the distal end should be closer to the C7 in the back. Take note of this because it will play a part, a major part actually, in the gesture of your figure. Once the distal end of the clavicles is placed, place the front and the back of the armpits from all four views. Often enough, people sculpt shoulders that are disconnected from the body, and this can usually be solved by placing the armpit correctly over the top of the box. A vertical measurement with the plumb line will help you discover where the armpit should be placed. This must be done from all four views in order to orient the armpit, in width, from the front and from the back. It also helps to place them from the side view as here the armpits say something about the size of the arm in the relationship to the body. Use internal information already established to help you find where the armpit should be placed in height. It's not terribly difficult actually to pull the armpits up and down a few millimeters if you need to. So this might be one of those areas where my normal rule of width are forgiving but heights are not is actually reversed. This method of approaching sculpture should be quite familiar to you by now. I find some landmarks in space by looking for their relationship to my initial decision, which is the box, and then I use those landmarks to begin sculpting. Like with everything else, I begin with contours. The contours of the shoulders can be a bit tricky. Keep things too narrow, like always, to begin with, as it is easy to pull the contours out of touch if you need to, and it's quite tricky if the contours are too wide and your shoulders feel like they are floating outside the body with no connection to it. The contour of the shoulder from the front and the back views 
can usually be broken down into two forms per shoulder, the bony upper portion and the fleshy lower portion. The upper form is shorter with sharper angles. It consists of the acromion, which is the end of the scapula, and the head of the humerus, which is the upper arm bone. The distal end of the scapula is actually further out than the distal end of the clavicle, which is this little bump on the top of your shoulder. The fleshy part, the larger form hanging from the upper form, is the deltoid muscle. It's softer in its angles and it's longer. Usually the high point of the deltoid favors towards the bottom of this form. Way too often do I see shoulders sculpted as one long curve, which perhaps is possible and happens in some people, but I rarely see it in real live models. More often than not, you will be able to see two forms making up the shoulders. The shoulder reaches further down than you think as well. On males, the visual end of the shoulder is in line with the nipples. On women, this varies as the height of female nipples varies because of the nature of breasts. The deltoid muscle inserts more or less in the middle of the humerus, so quite far down actually. However, we cannot see this insertion, so the shoulder usually doesn't end this far down visually. Just keep in mind that it ends a lot lower than you would perhaps think, and take note of information already established in the body and how the shoulder lines up with those. From the side view, the bottom of the shoulder seems more often than not to end further towards the front rather than in the middle of the arm. The deltoid is separated into three muscles, front, middle and back. The back one is important as it attaches to the scapula and therefore is important when it comes to making sure that the shoulder seems or feels like it's attached to the body and not just floating on the outside of it. The three deltoid muscles also influence the topography of the shoulder, so you want to pay close attention to this as well. Try to avoid making the shoulder into this neatly rounded, drop-like shape. It's a lot more complex than that. Even on people where you can't easily see every strand of muscle. The subtle plane changes that this knowledge can provide you with play a big role in creating realistic looking work. Even if it doesn't stand out, these planar differences are still present and make an impact visually on the surface. A couple of other things to take note of real quickly. We want symmetry in the length of the shoulder, especially in a pose like this where the arms are in a very similar pose. We also want symmetry in the placement of the armpit from the center line out. If not, then one side of the body has become wider than the other which you would rarely see in nature. So, both shoulders should be equally spaced in width on either side of the center line. I hope you enjoyed the video. As I said at the top, this is an excerpt of a longer Patreon exclusive video, part 8 of my Patreon exclusive video series. So, 
If you want to see more, support the channel, or get feedback on your own work, then check out my Patreon page. There's a link in the description below the video. Thank you for watching, stay creative, and I hope to see you in the next one.